Hello, welcome everybody to this conversation about uh, Radical Exchange Voice. So um, today I am joined by um, Alex Rondaccio and Jennifer Marone. Uh, Alex is a, a project developer at Radical Exchange Foundation and has been uh, really the, the leading energy in the development of Radical Exchange Voice. And uh, Jennifer Marone is the CEO of Radical Exchange Foundation. And I'm uh, Matt Pruitt, the president of Radical Exchange Foundation. Um, we're going to talk today uh, sort of informally and take uh, questions for, uh, via Slido about uh, Radical Exchange Voice. Uh, um, general questions about what it is um, and what our plans are with it, as well as specific questions pertaining to our, um, our recent beta um, run of Radical Exchange Voice. Um, so I I'm going to um, kick the conversation off here with a, a few words about what this project is and what our, uh, what our intentions are with it. And then we will uh, turn to a, a little bit more examination of, um, of this first sort of, uh, sort of test run that, um, that the radical exchange community has, has participated in. So, um, at a super high level, Radical Exchange Voice is, um, is an attempt to build a sort of an end-to-end -end, um, democratic process that, uh, that incorporates a number of different ideas about decision-making and um, you know, demo structuring democratic processes that, um, that the Radical Exchange community has been, has been working on. Um, and uh, it is also, uh, you know, sort of at the same time, it's a uh, it's a way of, uh, of of hopefully improving Radical Exchange Foundation's own governance and uh, and involving the Radical Exchange community in the governance of Radical Exchange Foundation. But um, what the uh, as a as a tool, as you know, in its current form as a as a web application, what Radical Exchange Voice does is it sort of starts with with quadratic voting which is you know a a method of of essentially prioritizing a number of different uh different options uh through through a vote and kind of zooms out from that uh from that process of of quadratic voting and attempts to sort of incorporate some other mechanisms to help um help address the problems that are sometimes kind of outside the frame of quadratic voting so one of the one of the biggest um, um, problems or um, uh, you know issues that we we've uh, tried to get our arms around with with quadratic voting is simply the fact that um, while quadratic voting enables uh, groups of people to make really precise, nuanced uh, decisions among a set of options, it sort of has nothing to say about who has power over the um, over the construction of that list of options. Uh, Radical Exchange Voice build, you know, starts from a sort of a, a quadratic vote, but then adds on to that a, uh, a deliberative process that precedes the, the vote um, and feeds into the construction of the choices. And then it adds on to that another process preceding that, which is a um, uh, a sort of a, a, a liquid democracy-like process of, uh, of of delegating credits between different uh, different uh, different voters um, in order to um, in order to, to determine sort of who gets to participate in the in the deliberation process and uh, and the subsequent voting process. Um, so with with that, I will um, I'll hand it to um, to Alex and Jen to get into a little bit of discussion of our recent um, our recent beta test with Radical Exchange Voice, where we um, uh, sort of put the question to the Radical Exchange community of what um, what priorities should Radical Exchange Foundation be focused on for the next year. Thanks, Matt. So. Yeah, so before we get into the results of that, of that uh, pilot that we just finished, I'm just going to do a quick recap of exactly how it went down. Um, so we're super excited about this pilot. 
you know, our first time getting the community to participate in our decision making about how to spend our time and our energy as the Radical Exchange Foundation. Um, and we're looking for, you know, will, how will this like, how will this uh, ballot proposal process go? Will we get like really great actionable proposals from the community that will trade off well against one another on a quadratic voting ballot? Um, will the results be true to what the community wants? And we were, we were super excited about the result. I think it went really well from end to end. Um, we ended up with really great actionable results from the community that sent a clear message about what, about what the community thinks we should be doing. Um, and so the way that it worked in the pilot was we started out by putting out a, an open call to action to the community, um, an, an open invitation to participate in the pilot. Uh, you may have seen us mention this in past live streams. We tried to drum up as many people as we could to participate um, and be as inclusive as possible. So we invited everyone who asked to be invited plus a bunch of other people that we thought of ourselves. And so that number ended up being 150 people that we initially invited to participate in the process. Um, then in the delegation stage, the people who signed up and joined had the opportunity to, so I, I should mention each one of the people who were invited all received an equal number of voice credits at the beginning of the process. And that was 99 voice credits. Then in what we called the delegation stage, everyone who joined had the opportunity to then invite more people into the process who they thought should have a say in the decision, either because they have worked with them before and they think they're doing really valuable work that's related to what we do, or for whatever reason, they think they should have a say. So in the delegation stage, people who we invited, invited an additional 17 other people into the process. Um, so of that pool of 167 people who were invited either by us or by others, 68 people joined, um, four of which were people who were invited by members of the delegation. Then in the delegation, so in the delegation stage, people sent a bunch of transfers to one another, um, uh, sending their own voice credits to people who they thought, you know, should have more of a say. If I thought that Matt should have more of a say or I trusted his opinion or whatever, I would send him some of my voice credits. Um, so we were really, really interested to see how that dynamic would play out, that kind of liquid democracy aspect. Um, and some of the questions we were looking for were, you know, with that kind of system, will the distribution of voice credits become too unequal? Or will it reflect like real, uh, the, the real will of the community for who they trust and such. Um, but so in the end, 943 voice credits were sent from one person to another. Um, in 31 people sent transfers, which was really great. Um, so everybody was engaging with those mechanisms in, in, in a really active way. And it, and it was really cool to see then the, how it worked and the, the, the distribution of voice credits at the end, I think ended up not being too unequal. I think it was, I think it was a pretty, pretty reasonable distribution and represented the will of the community. And I should mention then whenever people sent voice credit transfers to one another, they were all matched by quadratic funding, which gave a boost to people who received voice credits from more than one other delegate. So if a lot of people supported one person, they received more voice credits. Um, so it's really interesting to see how that dynamic played out. Then at the end of that, we had this sort of voice credit distribution across of all of these different participants. And we moved into what we call the deliberation stage where we had this conversation where all of those people were allowed to submit proposals for the ballot and also just relevant ideas or feelings about, about what Radical Exchange Foundation should be doing. Um, they were also able to either agree or disagree with any other comment. So we got this great data too about where opinion groups were forming and where there was consensus across opinion groups. Um, and this was using the tool uh, Polis. 
right, using polis. So then after that, we had sort of another interesting point where we had to take the proposals from the community and turn them into a, a coherent ballot where all of the proposals would trade off of each other in a, in a way that made sense. So the way that we did it this time around was we curated a ballot from those proposals. So we actually went through all the proposals one by one and we tried to stick as, as true to the original language of each, of each comment from the community. Um, but to make sure that there weren't redundant proposals on the ballot or nonsensical proposals on the ballot or proposals that weren't actionable. So we tried to turn them into like, like simple verbs, ac actionable proposals that, that would all trade off against one another. So out of, I think 81 comments that were submitted, we ended up with 54 proposals on the ballot. So then because that was sort of a centralized aspect of the process, we kind of opened it back up to the community to decide whether or not the ballot that we had curated from the polis conversation was actually true to the feelings that the community expressed in that conversation. And the way we did that was we added a 55th proposal to the ballot called the ballot ratification proposal. And all of the voters would have to upvote or downvote the ballot ratification proposal using the same budget of voice credits that they were using to express their preferences across all of the other proposals. Um, and then at the end of the election, if the ballot ratification proposal received less than zero votes, that would signal that the community had rejected our curation job that we did. And it would nullify the results of the election. And we would have to go back and curate a new ballot or perhaps with a, a different curator doing the job um, and then have an election on the new ballot. Uh, in the end, the ballot ratification proposal passed. So the results were final. And actually no one downvoted the ballot ratification proposal, which was a nice, uh, a, a nice support that we got on, the, on, on that part of the process, which was one that we were interested to see how it would play out. Um, on the other hand, we didn't get a chance yet to really test out how it would work in sort of an adverse environment where there were some people who didn't agree and some people who did, or perhaps some people who, you know, for either good faith or bad faith reasons wanted to take down the ballot. So we didn't really get to test it out in that environment yet, but it was good that everybody approved of the job that we did in curating the ballot. So that was how the process worked. And at the end of the election, we ended up, like I said, with a really great, with, with really great actionable results. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Jen to discuss some of the takeaways from those results. Thanks, Alex and Matt. And one thing about the ballot ratification that we in our debrief after we had the results and we put out the last blog post <clears throat> and in discussing this call we we thought that in moving forward in the future because that wasn't how it operated on this one that the ballot curators or curator will not have the ability to ratify or to um to vote for ratification ballot ratification so that's one thing going forward there's a lot um of work to be done in the development so the like, referring to the most voted 72 votes the top point was to develop and refine rxc voice with the aim of making it useful to other organizations communities or blockchain groups and <clears throat> number two to develop rxc voice as an open source project by a community of users and developers who are willing to contribute work or money those are two things that basically go hand in hand and they go hand in hand with to continuing to test and refine and figure out where are the the points that are that need to be changed in the current design for example is the delegation process creating powers uh, concentrations of power is it a popularity um, result in the end and how to change that so that we're really look 
looking forward to hearing from those who are interested in working on this and starting a group, basically. I think that's that's one thing that Matt, Leon, and Alex, the development team, can speak about a bit more what their next steps are, what's the process going to be. <clears throat> um, I don't know, Matt and Alex, how you want to, if you want to talk about it after, and I go through first. Yeah, I think we're, we'll get into a bunch of these uh, of these questions about how um, how we're thinking of of improving the process and what sorts of uh, refinements and additional features we think uh, are interesting next steps. Yeah. Um, but I wonder if it is it possible for one of us to like share a screen that shows the um, the list of, yes. of uh, proposals here. Okay. Why don't I? Uh, or Alex, do you have that? I do, I have it right here. Okay. And also, so I'll just keep talking. The RxC voice is actually already on GitHub. Alex or Leon, if you can put a link. Um, we've already shared it widely, but we'll share it again here and in the follow-up to this, where this recording will live. Um, to the first point about making it useful and available to others. That's a process that we definitely, is a definite yes. Um, there's no one right answer to continuing how to develop it. So again, please get involved. Uh, let us know. You can write to our voice at radicalexchange.org. And so the third one, produce high quality media, videos, presentations, podcasts to communicate the ideas more broadly. This is something that we are, we would love to be producing more. And we are kind of holding back because we need more support in the production and engineering of some of this media. <clears throat> so particularly podcasts, um, if there's anybody out there that is interested in getting involved, uh, right now we put radical exchanges out monthly. Sometimes it's a bit longer. Radical. Uh, RxC replayed gets put out bi-monthly and we have live chats, live streams like this. And again, we want to increase putting media out there. There's a lot more ideas, uh, especially if you are looking for more artistic output. If you have ideas, get in touch with me, especially if you want to do something, Jennifer at RadicalExchange.org. Love to brainstorm. We haven't had an arts and communication, arts and culture group going for a while. And it's, it's something that would be great to start up and see more activity in chapters or just in the community. So please reach out if you have ideas. If there, I think that's also Matt and Alex, a really good idea. What, who do you want to hear from? Might be a ballot we can put out on RxC Voice or a, a process we can put out to see because right now we come up with the people ourselves and that could be also a more community devised schedule um okay number four develop rxc software to facilitate pilots of rxc ideas by chapters and others i got 54 votes each chapter so far is right now it's independent that's a big note to state um so the way that we work with chapters, like, okay, so with Brazil, for example, and Berlin, we've worked with them on special events. So sometimes we have things that we want to do. Sometimes other organizations or individuals come to um, us to help to build projects together. <clears throat> we haven't worked on developing software or any pilots specifically with any chapters and we only with um, projects. Matt, maybe you can speak to the Brazil one, how that came about. Because that wasn't with the chapter, that was independent of the chapter. Well, the way that I uh, interpret this, this proposal is that we should be essentially, you know, building more tools like along the lines of, of radical change voice um, and you know other kinds of of, of voting systems or um, or 
like platforms that can allow people to run experiments with things like quadratic funding or uh, or salsa, um, and you know put those tools in the hands of chapters and work on uh, work on projects together, uh, mm -hmm. so that we can kind of get these get these experiments out there more broadly. Um, yeah. So there so, is quadratic RxC QV that's on the site. That tool is available, and then RxC Voice will be is on GitHub, as we said, and we'd love to work on people that are interested in that, in developing that further. And if you have a project that you would like to develop, I would say you can also just get in touch with us. We have some projects, pilots that we are developing and executing with other organizations, and we'd be happy to do that. I would say, I mean, this is not my time. So Alex and <laughs> Matt, that's more of your, your bandwidth. So how would yeah, you, no, you how would you see that happening? Yeah, no, you 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 said it exactly. Like if if anybody has ideas for either pilots of tools we already have or new tools that they'd like to develop, absolutely don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, because we're always super excited to workshop new ideas and everything. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with Matt. Like, I, I think that that was really cool to see sort of this proposal and a few others seem to be a, a pretty clear um, signal to continue actually developing software and tools that implement some of the ideas that we talk about all the time um, and to help other organizations experiment with them using actual tools like RxCQV and like RxC Voice, which were, as we've been alluding to, hoping to turn into more of an open platform that groups can join, create their own group on the platform and hold their own decisions. That's something that we're hoping to do going forward. Um, so yeah, it was cool to see support of that kind of area of our work because it's sort of sort of more of a new er a new new area this we've been ha had a lot of activity in that area this year with RxC voice and RxC QV and everything relative to other years so yeah don't hesitate to get in touch if you want to work with us in that area and i think also you know looking at these looking at these results uh, as a whole it it's pretty, you know, one of the one of the clear takeaways is that we should be doubling down on our efforts to um, to to build tools that facilitate experiments of with radical exchange ideas or sort of new, you know, institution design ideas. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's like a that's like a clear um, a, a clear mandate for us now, right? Looking <clears throat> looking forward to the next year. Uh, you know, we we will hold ourselves accountable to this sort of prioritized list, and um, and the community should should hold us accountable to it as well. Um, I'm also thinking that we need to because we need to know what direction of tools or what there needs to be better communication between the community and. The foundation or who's ever developing the tools to understand what kind of pilots people are interested in running. So that could be a good use time of the monthly community calls. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I absolutely agree. Um, so if you have and, ideas, we have a monthly community call every Wednesday at noon, which we might be changing the time occasionally, but right now it's still at noon, first Wednesday of the month. And if you have ideas, we put out a newsletter. If you're not signed up, that's where <clears throat> most of the information uh, or where, you'll be, where you will be updated. So try to, we know newsletters are not the, fav the most favorite thing, but stay in touch some way, um, Twitter or there's a Telegram channel um, or email and we, or just put it in your calendar and check out the 
website, radicalexchange.org to get on there or just send us an email. That's also possible. Um, Matt, sorry, oh. were you saying something else? Yeah, Matt, did you have something? Uh, no, go ahead. Um, yeah, so that, that brought me to something that I wanted to talk about. And do, can I stop sharing the proposals or do you think we've sure. covered enough of those? Um, there's some more I'd like to get into if we have time. Okay, we'll put it, we'll put it back up later yeah. and yeah. come back to it. But uh, yeah, so that brought me to something that I wanted to talk about that I've kind of been ruminating on over the last couple of days, which is, um, so what you just mentioned, Jen, about, and Matt, about we have this apparent mandate to develop more tools and facilitate more pilots and experiments with these ideas and how we we need a way to communicate to communicate with the community about what now within that area of work what types of pilots and what types of tools are the most important to people and what what do they have the most energy about um what do people want to work on and you also mentioned earlier, Jen, that this could be really useful for communicating about what, who people want to hear from in our kind of media activities. Um, and that both of those things are things that this type of process could be really useful for, but that we, that we didn't quite get in a one-off uh, pilot here. But so what I've been thinking in, in the last couple of days is I'm interested in how we could, what, one way I think we could experiment with improving on this process is I, I was looking at the proposals the other day and I, there's like, there's clear areas, there's clear like buckets of activity that different proposals are supporting. Um, and they, you know, they tie really closely to how I think of the buckets of work that Radical Exchange Foundation does. And it just got me thinking, would it, would it be, it, maybe there's a way that we could kind of start from that question, because that's, that's really the, <clears throat> ultimately, I think when we set out to do this, one of the main questions we were looking to answer is like, so we, from a more higher level perspective, we have these buckets of work that we do. We have this kind of like research oriented idea development, think tank type of activities. Um, we have sort of the media activities. Um, we have the events and we have this kind of, uh, like experimentation or like taking theory to practice uh, arm of what we do. Um, and we have, I guess, yeah, those are, I'd say those are kind of the four main areas of work that we do. And I was interested in, because that's kind of the, the best an easiest way to divide up what we do and divide up our resources across those areas. Could we get more direct information from the community about, about that level? Okay. Should we put more resources into this area or that area? And I was wondering if I, one thing that I, one idea that I had was what if we had two, uh, two sort of phases of the election where you start out at the higher level and you say okay here are the four areas where we're dividing our resources between let's first answer the question of how much time should we spend on research how much time should we spend on experimentation how much time should we spend on media um, and have a quadratic vote between those higher level options and then maybe have another one where then we have these finer grain proposals because I just found that there were, you know, there were some, some, some areas had like 11 different proposals that were all in that same area. And some had, were like four proposals in the same area. 
So then they're not, those big areas of activity weren't trading off against each other in a really like clear way because of the imbalance of the number of finer grain proposals that are then basically splitting the vote between say think tank activities. Um, so I was wondering if you could like divide the ballot up where I, I was imagining instead of having my 99 voice credit balance trading off against all of these different fine grain proposals, maybe I had a separate budget for each area of work, each of those four areas I mentioned. And you could see on the screen, like divided by lines and my little voice credit bucket for each one, it would be a pretty simple interface, mm -hmm. wouldn't really make it any more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, and you could have a different number, of, maybe you could have a different number of voice credits based on the, for, for each area, based on the importance that the community assigned to that whole area in the step out front or something like that could be interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think there's also something to be said or thought about having some kind of distinction between radical exchange foundation, people like ourselves and the actual community that is not part of the foundation. I don't know if you've given any thought to that. I haven't, I mean, I don't, it, it's curious just to see like what's proposed by us and then what people, it'd be nice to understand like what's the, what are the new ideas that we don't propose because we're already doing those things. You see what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I, I think one, you know, there, you know, any organization that used Radical Exchange Voice, including us, could set up the question in different ways, you know? So what one way of setting up the question would be so, sort of to, to define like program areas and, um, and ask for input on how to allocate resources between the, between the program areas. Yeah. Um, and we could, we could try that, you know, in the next round. I think that that, that might be, that might indeed be really interesting. Um, but I think one hope um, with the, um, in terms of like what this process could do is that it could surface ideas that we haven't quite thought of yet. So in other words, um, you know, if we divide, if we were to just sort of divide up into, into program areas and try to determine a resource allocation um, between them, um, we would, um, uh, you know, that would not necessarily surface like, you know, ideas that we haven't thought of yet. And, you know, the ideas that we haven't thought of yet could affect the way that we would, we might think our resources should be allocated between the program areas, if that makes sense. So, I mean, I think the ideal, like the sort of holy grail for this kind of process is, is that it generates a conversation that causes us to adjust our thinking about, you know, about what our program areas should be even, right? Um, <clears throat> or even define what we're talking about because yeah. some of the other the others in the top 10 of the list, um, I would follow up with questions, for example, explore solutions outside of crypto blockchain that relate to ideas identified in radical markets. And that would be a great discussion to have about, well, what what are some of the solutions that some people do have? We don't consider ourselves a crypto or blockchain focused organization, but there is a lot of crypto and blockchain projects going on that, that maybe we give too much or not a balanced um, exposure to compared to other projects or solutions. So this is from the community of, for example, the person or people that, <clears throat> the person that proposed that and those that voted along with it, that that's great for a, a conversation. Um, or to send examples or to highlight examples in, in our view that then we can um, rebroadcast if there are already solutions. 
So I think RxC voice was an example of a non-crypto or blockchain. Is that on-chain, Alex? It's not, it's not on-chain, right? The tool? Yeah. No, oh yeah, it's not. It's something that um, we'd like to do down the road is take it on-chain for, um, for security reasons and mm -hmm. such. But right now it's, yeah, just a, just a web app. Yeah. Um, I really like this next one. And I think that's a good proposal in general for a lot of the, that can touch on in various ways, a lot of the, the concepts, um, create Salsa as a service to make it easy for anyone to implement self-assessed licensing. Matt, I don't know, you've done the most work in this area. And I imagine it would have to be a little bit like what the fellow Doug was trying to create at one point um, <clears throat> with a, an easily buildable cooperative contract or structure. Startup kit. Yeah, and I'm not sure if that's what this idea would solve as a service would need to be like because each situation needs to be thought through. Yeah, I mean, I, this idea is really close to my heart. Mm -hmm. We've um, we're we're already doing work, um, basically translating the idea of salsa into sort of an actionable um, design for licenses that. Uh, that real estate developers or others who sort of manage space can um, can use to to create sort of um, uh, um, essentially like alternative space management technology um, where people hold spaces according to like uh, salsa licenses or sort of self-assessed taxed uh, licenses um, and this is it, it, it would be uh, it is definitely definitely doable to build uh, either like an on chain or an off chain um, uh, platform that allows people to instantiate these kinds of licenses and uh, manage them. Um, and I think that if if we did that, we um, we we could make it a lot easier for a bunch of different uh, people who are in a position to run these kinds of experiments to um, to experiment with with salsa licenses and, um, and and use them. So I was I was very happy to see that proposal um, get so much support. I would be super excited to work on something like that. So yeah, if anybody wants to collaborate, let us know. And this this is actually, by the way, something that we're, we've we've been in contact with the uh, Brazil chapter um, uh, exploring exploring the possibility of um, of using salsa licenses to manage uh, manage commercial real estate. Um, so we'll see where that goes, but I'm I actually am uh, hopeful that we can we can do uh, do something along those lines, which would kind of, kind of tick the box of, of, uh, of proposal six here, as well as proposal four. Um, so yeah, stay tuned on that. Um, and I'm also really interested in the following one. I think that's super easy to get set up and we have, mm -hmm. there's lots of, um, really great minds to have their eye on that, to judge it, the business plan competitions featuring RxC ideas, and just different business plan competitions that also might have other ideas or solutions, um, but that still meet the same aims, aim of distributing power and concentration. And um, So this is one that is a bit close to my heart as well. And Radical Exchange sort of did that in, was it the Detroit conference, right? There was uh, the Project Exchange, which Matt, Matt put together. Yeah. 
I remember I remember watching it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was super the, cool. Were they all business plans in the end? They weren't business plans per se. A lot of them were established businesses, but they, you know, it was a sort of right. a, a showcase of of projects related to radical exchange ideas that either startups or or established businesses were working on. Mm. Okay. Right. Yeah. I guess it was more of like a startup mm-hmm. competition than a than a business plan competition. Mm-hmm. But that was super cool. Yeah, to see what um, people in the private sector were working on. Yeah. An experiment with RxC ideas and games that was in order to educate people about the public about public goods. Um, another great idea. There was a bit of experimentation at that same conference in Detroit in 2019 with Monopoly. And I don't, I know, I don't know, that's somebody else's project and it was altered for that use case. I don't know if we can develop on top of that or Yeah, I mean, do you have any other ex- examples of ones happening? Well, so actually, we're um, we're we're working with a, um, a a game develop like a prominent game developer who is work who is essentially building a um, salsa mechanics into a into a um, a board game right now. I don't know if there's too much more that I can say about it. I don't want to uh, disclose uh, um, anything I shouldn't, but um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that we're, we're definitely looking to build more uh, collaborations with with game developers um, who I think there, there's like huge potential to build uh, salsa dynamics into into games as well as uh, quadratic voting and, and quadratic funding and um, and um, and other sorts of radical exchange mechanisms but one one quick point of emphasis that i i do want to touch on is that um this is like looking at this list of of priorities um i think the key is it it's not it the the point is that over is that from now until a year from now we, we should be focused on on these as our as our priorities right so the the stuff that we've like already done that falls into these buckets is is less material than what we will do between now and a year from now mm-hmm. to um, to focus on these things uh, so you know w- when all is said and done um, you know s- six months uh, nine months a year out. Uh, we will be reporting back to uh, to the community as like a continuation of this process um, on on what we what we're doing to to execute on this list of, of priorities basically um, and um, and yeah I mean I, ho- I hope that you know so this this will sort of steer us and be a bit of a, a bit of a of a north star in terms of you know, um, uh, what kind of stuff we need to do to to best serve the um, the community, and hopefully that will in turn lead into a, another radical exchange voice process that will, um, you know, give us even more even more direction and and be structured in an even better way, and and so on. There's also an overarching perspective of a lot of the the proposals and this whole process um, that that really highlights the need for a more networked way of working and communicating and allowing the, the organization to communicate with the community and the community to communicate with each other and find out what's going on. Um, because a lot of these things probably exist and either we don't have visibility over that and others don't and trying to kind of do that ecosystem mapping and make it easier for the network to to collaborate um, to have visibility over what's happening is a really important factor 
in what radical exchange should also the foundation should put its time towards. Um, yeah, that, absolutely. That's not explicitly there, but I think that's there through all of these. That was one of the things that got me thinking actually about a way to take a higher level view of like areas of activity and trade those off of one another because I I had the same feeling that there were a lot like a lot of different comments laced throughout the ballot um, and in the polis conversation there were a ton because a lot of them I in, in the curation process actually ended up getting condensed because they were all like there would be one or two or th even three in a very few cases um, so closely related that they made more sense as one proposal on the final ballot. But there, my point being, there were so many different proposals that expressed that sentiment that, that you just expressed, Jen, that there should be some that there, there's some way that we could be doing, that we could be structuring the network better for better communication across the community of us to well, structuring chapters the, and the, chapters to each other. Yeah, I would say just different wording, way we can be constructing the infrastructure for the network too. Right, to right, right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, channels of communication across the network. Um, I it, it, I agree. It felt like there were a lot of different proposals there, and I that's why I started kind of messing around with the data to see if there was some different way that you could organize the process to get a better indication of people's support for broader buckets of activity because it felt like there were so many, but it felt like. It, it's kind of one of those things where it's maybe easier to say we should be working on this than it is to say this is this we should be doing this specific thing to improve on you know what I mean it, it was better to say there might be a problem here that we can work on than it was to say um, here's the solution and so for that reason none of the specific proposals which all presented like different more granular perspectives on how to improve in that regard. None of, none of those specific proposals made it into the top 10 really. But with the possible exception of the 10th proposal here, mm -hmm. but there were so many and they all got some votes. So I wondered if they kind of like split the, the vote in a way that they wouldn't if you just if we had just had a proposal that said like improve communicate like work on new ways to improve communication across the network or something like that and collaboration yeah yeah no, i don't I, I don't have the full visibility that you have with the the consolidation of the vote the proposals um and how the ballot how the votes that were on the ones that were taken out were distributed or did they just not go to the one that was similar didn't um, they go to the one that was similar Sorry. yeah so to clarify i'll just scroll through and point out a couple of these um, so of the things that made it to the final ballot we had in just in this area of we should maybe work on improving this we had and i'm going to include like the chapter specific ones. So we had this one, support vibrant and independent chapters with diverse approaches to accomplishing RxC's mission. So that's kind of expressing that chapters should be strong and independent. And also that we, it's also expressing a view that our management of chapters should be decentralized in that they should all be able to kind of have their own diverse approach um, and then there was another, you know, there was another one that kind of took the opposite view, said, yeah, chapters should be strong, but their strengths should come from the RxE Foundation. Like we should take a more active role in, it's in, on here somewhere, take a more active role in um, organizing chapters around like a centralized vision. 
here, take a more active role in organizing RxD chapters around a cohesive vision. That got less votes because I think people were more interested in the kind of decentralized structure, I guess, than this. But those 18 votes still are, are, are votes for strong chapters. And the other one, the, the, the other one that we saw before, you know, while, while they presented different visions for where the chapters, from where the chapters should derive their strength, they both, uh, all of those votes were votes for strong chapters. I think the number 40 is really important in, in regards to what we're talking about. Right, right, yeah. Structure communication in the RxD network to reflect peer-to-peer -peer values instead of more centralized organizational structures. So like we said, all of these votes are votes for we could improve the way that we communicate across the network, but it also presented this specific idea of how to do that. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, split votes in that area with other proposals that presented alternative visions. Mm -hmm. Here's another one about a, a vision of how the chapter should look. Um, establish a stronger community owner for each chapter. So there were a lot of these. <clears throat> one, of the, uh, one of the questions on Slido is, uh, have you heard of holacracy as a method for getting things done in these buckets of motivation? I think that that, um, I, you know, I have like a surface level familiarity with, uh, with holacracy, but I think it would be interesting to explore some of these other, um, some of these kinds of decentralized governance techniques as, as a way of establishing circles of responsibility for some of these different areas or, um, or as a way of improving uh, chapter structure, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if it, uh, oh, sorry, Jen, go ahead. I think it's also, um, the word support comes up a lot and it's not super clear in what, way that means what what exactly how that word is being used um support business plans support vibrant and independent chapters though it says support um, arts projects it comes up through a lot and it's just an under it would be if we can come up with a way to find out what people mean by that word like we could do a, a competition um but Do that is it explicitly meaning like fund or or just running one? I don't know if either of you have an opinion of what the word repeatedly is, is suggesting. Well, one thing that I'd I'd like to suggest is that just for this to solve this sort of problem across the board is I, I like I think it would be really great if we could, because, you know, something that we've been talking about a lot over the course of this conversation today is like how to, how to follow up these results, how to, how to kind of parse the language of them. Like we've gotten these kind of broad signals, how to parse the language of them in a more specific way, mm -hmm. how to um, get more granular information about each one. Like not only do we want to work on developing software to facilitate pilots of RxD ideas by chapters and others, but figure out which ones are the most important in the community. I think for all those things, like one thing that we can do right now is open up a post pilot conversation mm -hmm. on our discord. We, we recently set up a couple uh, channels on our discord server specifically devoted to RxD voice and I think that could be a really great place for the community to gather and kind of, um, kind of have a open a conversation ab about the results that we got from this process, mm -hmm. um, and have some of those conversations about. Okay, let's talk about you know, let's talk about proposal 
where is it? Let's talk about proposal four and have an open conversation and get more specific information about what people want and where we should be working and who we can collaborate with and all those things. Yeah, good idea. So if you're there out there and you're not on Discord on the RxC voice Discord, uh, join it and start either start the conversation or for when we might bring it up. <clears throat> the other thing is um, it goes back a little bit to like the ecosystem mapping and <clears throat> collaboration um, and kind of not consolidating projects, but just people are working on things, moving away from just the individual entrepreneur style method that everybody kind of develops their own thing and then tries to be the winner out there. If there's a lot of similar projects going on, it, I mean, it's even curious, um, there are some voice projects going on. It's it's interesting to see what the comparisons are between RxC Voice and the other ones out there. I don't know how much in the development team you've looked at what they are, those differences, and what, what you've learned or what you think, um, even in the process so far, what you might think to already improve. Uh, I mean, I think that's a good transition to the um, discussion about some of the areas that we're looking at, you know, developing further and um, and refining in um, in the in the voice process, um, which is also, of course, relevant to the top voted proposal um, in the process. Uh, so, I wonder if uh, Alex, could you kind of um, uh, get us started in, in outlining some of the some of the issues that we're thinking about for uh, next steps with voice. Sure. Um, so as I sort of alluded to before, the one of the one of the main next steps next steps is to as the top proposal said it make this useful to other organizations. Um, so what that means for us is that we have to uh, create, basically, we have to develop like, a, like an admin console um, for groups to administer their own decisions on the platform. Um, it's already kind of set up to have this functionality where a group can create their own, uh, an organization can create their own group on the app to hold decisions, but we have to kind of build the infrastructure to allow admins from each group to administer their decision. Um, so that's kind of one of the first steps that we have here to facilitate new, new pilots and new organizations using this. Um, another area that we're gonna be working on to facilitate that is we really would like this process to be modular um, because obviously the process in the exact way that we did it in the pilot uh, is not a silver bullet. It's not like a one size fits all method for making decisions. Um, there might be, you know, organizations for different decisions are gonna have different needs. Um, and there's a couple areas where we could make this process customizable to fit those different needs. One of those is in the delegation stage. Uh, an obvious one is it might not always make sense for to have this mechanism where people are transferring voice credits and uh, this liquid democracy aspect where you end up with an unequal voice credit distribution going into the voting stage. Um, it might make sense in some case, it might make more sense in some cases to have it just be egalitarian right off the bat. So we started, we, everybody in the RxC community started with 99 voice credits, but then they were able to transfer them to others. And that's how you ended up with this different distribution. It might not make sense in some cases to do that at all. 
you just you might just everybody starts out with 99 voice credits and then you go straight into drafting the ballot uh, collectively. So that's one thing that we would like to make customizable. Um, let's see. Another one in the delegation stage is that aspect of defining the boundaries of the community. So we had this aspect where you could actually invite new people into the process by sending voice credits to their email address, uh, even if they weren't already in the delegation. Um, and that's super useful for some communities, um, particularly communities that are either trying to grow or trying to define their boundaries because they're new. Or in our case, we just wanted to be inclusive. I think it's really the main reason why we did it that way. Um, in other cases, obviously the the boundaries of the of the polity will be will be obvious right off the bat. Um, you might have a, a a group there where everybody could fit in one room, and we know who they are, and so there's no reason for us to be able to to have this part of the process up front where we're defining the boundaries. We already know who should participate, so we'll skip that step. That's something that we can also make customizable for decision admins from different organizations. You could maybe uncheck a box and say, we don't need to do that part. We don't need to do the, we, we wanna be egalitarian. We don't need the liquid democracy part. Um, those are some areas that could be customizable. Um, let's see. Another area that we've been talking about a lot recently that we're, that's, sort of a really interesting kind of mechanism design conversation that we're having is about the deliberation stage. Um, we've been kind of thinking through the way that the collective ballot drafting process went and thinking about ways that we can improve it. And we've come up with some interesting ideas. So that's sort of a longer term question, but on a longer term time scale, we're thinking about ways that we could improve that part of the process. Um, one thing about it is this, uh, this, this sort of problem of how you can have many people submitting comments that are very closely related, that are all trying to address the same idea, but that maybe they're different formulations um, or maybe they're different, represent different perspectives on the same issue. Um, and we didn't have like a, a great way of handling that the way we did it the first time. Um, I think we did, a, I think it ended it like, it was pretty good. I think I, the results, you know, you, you, and everybody can decide for themselves, looking at the results that are, that are published on our website. Um, but I, I think we had, we ended up with a pr pretty good, you know, concise proposals that were all all represented like different actionable um, ideas. Uh, but there were a couple things that we think we could improve on, like you know the fact that there were fifty five proposals on the ballot. Um, obviously, the more proposals you have on the ballot, it 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 imposes kind of like a more and more of a cognitive burden on the user to scroll through all those proposals and trade them off against one another when many of them might be closely related, like I, like I was already talking about at length. Um, so we're kind of interested in developing new ways to have a conversation while also coming up with a way to, it would be really cool if we could sort of measure the amount of consent like if we could take a bunch of proposals that are closely related and somehow choose a winner using data from how how much of the community agreed on each one like if the if particularly if there's an issue that may, may be divisive and then and there's a maybe opinion groups that totally disagree and then there's one comment towards the end of the conversation that kind of synthesizes shared value underlying values from both groups 
And then we have this data where, oh, okay, these groups usually disagree, but they agreed on this comment. So let's pull that comment, that particular formulation of this idea that all these comments are sort of um, contributing towards. And let's pull that one to the final ballot. And we can leave the rest because we have this data that says the community will support that. It's things in that area could be uh, really cool to explore in sort of a long, longer term development timescale. Matt, do, do you wanna add anything to that? No, I think you, I think you captured it. Um, the, the holy grail of, of deliberative processes is basically to, um, to use them to surface proposals that, um, that, that resolve apparent disagreements between between different opinion groups. So for example, you know, in a in a polis process, if you have a few different clusters of, you know, a few different sort of opinion clusters, um, you know, who who differ on a particular issue and you and you're able to solicit through the process ideas that um, that, that bridge those disagreements or 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 resolve them. Um, you know, then you're, you're really, um, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of cooking with gas, so to speak at that point, right? Because, you know, th then it, not only are you using a voting to uh, come up, you know, to, to figure out which proposals that most people like, you're also, you know, really, really, you know, it, Using the deliberative process to come up with new ideas that push the uh, push the entire community in a better direction, um, and I don't I don't think we we didn't quite get to that in, you know in this uh, in this first first round. Part of it you know it might involve uh, sort of a different a different curation philosophy. It might involve um, sort of a more multi phase deliberative process. Um, or some or some combination of those things, uh, but uh, I think that that is. Um, it, it also may involve like a like a larger sample size, basically, um, you know, so that so there's you know enough time and enough different voices in the um, in the conversation for these kinds of you know for the new ideas to uh, to really emerge. Um, but that is um, that's a big. Part of the problem that we that we would like to solve, you know, to in, in addition to, um, I, I think we, you know, in my kind of um, taking stock of, of of how we did, I I think that we managed to to run a deliberative process that um, that that surfaced good ideas, that surfaced coherent ideas, that basically spanned the breadth of ideas that the community um, you know had on the top of their head. But it would be great to build an even better deliberative process that um, that gets to that next level, um, and uh, that's uh, that's that's part of what we're what we're thinking about for the next phases of this. And as we've said, <clears throat> with some of the the obscurity in the language or in like a vague statement, there's definitely dis more discussion or a little bit more deliberation in addition to discussion that might need to happen in some processes. Um, there was one thing, Alex, that you said, but maybe we've gone too far from it. <laughs> it was a while ago. Um, so there's a few uh, questions in the uh, Slido that we should get to. Mm -hmm. uh, so one is, um, how can radical exchange voice scale and be resilient against spam slash duplicates? Um, I'm not sure if either of you have anything to add to that, but I, I, I sort of think we've already covered that by talking about the curation process. Essentially, the curate, you know, one of the main functions of the curation process is, is essentially removing spam and duplicates. Um, there are, um, uh, you know, hopefully, well, yeah, but ahead, there's ahead. also the, I wonder if the person that posed the question is also thinking in terms of 
duplicates as in the same person with two email addresses. Yeah, so the what Matt mentioned, like the cur the curation process, I, I think addresses the issue of spam. Uh, but but you're right, Jen, the another area of conversation is um, like the Sybil problem, which obviously is a huge problem for everybody who's working in this space right now. Um, so I can, that's definitely an area that an, an area of research that's very high on our list in the roadmap going forward. Um, I can, I can briefly talk about what we did for this round, but really what we were looking at in this round was like, we, we tested that this was the first major experiment. We tested it out in like a very, very good vibes, goodwill environment. Everybody, there was not a lot of disagreement. Everybody used the mechanisms in a very good faith way. And that was good to, you know, that the first step is to figure out with the mechanism design, like, do we have something here that is interesting and worth continuing to work on? And then now that we, I, I think the answer to that is clearly yes, we do have something that's interesting and worth continuing to work on. So now the, the next step is, okay, how can we, how can we lock this down? That, so that's gonna be a huge priority going forward. Um, but so what we did in this round was we did just, we imposed basically a cost on Sybils which limited the number of symbols that anyone could make to basically two or three um, because we had a, a threshold of voice credits um, below which you would not be able to participate in, in the polis conversation or the voting. And that threshold was 25. So basically, if you wanted to create symbols, each one would cost 25 voice credits if you wanted it to be useful. Um, so that at least, you know, that's one way that you can put a limit on it. Obviously that's pretty weak, um, but it, it at least puts a limit on it. Um, we also have sort of like a, a community check, uh, like a visibility check on Sybils, which is that we have each account, we, we each account in order to be verified and participate has to log into a um, GitHub or Twitter account. Um, so what, you know, what that does is another sort of informal check on Sybils uh, as, as another sort of informal check on Sybils, um, everybody appears publicly to the other delegates in the delegation on the delegation page with a link to their account. So at any point, someone can check, is this person who they say they are? And if it's like a brand new GitHub account that was made yesterday, they can report it to us. And we did maintain the right to, you know, handle situations like that accordingly. Um, but in terms of like scaling, like the comment mentioned, um, taking this on chain would, would be a big step in the, in that direction, I think, um, in terms of security. So I, yeah, I, I mean, Long story short, that's a high priority area of research here going forward. Yeah, and you know one one possibility is is integrating um, proof of unique human systems like proof of humanity chain or bright ID or or one of these other kinds of uh, of systems, uh, which has a, a lot of a lot of interesting potential. Um, there are also downsides to that in that you know requiring those sorts of things now, uh, restricts participation to like uh, crypto savvy users, um, and um, uh, and it's also I, I think you know so it re reduces us reduces down the possible users to a to a certain set, and um, those systems themselves are it's not, not perfectly clear yet that they're that they're that they're absolutely foolproof, but. Um, going forward, we hope to evolve radical exchange voice with the evolving, um, you know, infrastructure for for proof of humanity um, that's going on in, in in the in the broader community, and um, um, and hopefully get to a place that is uh, you know securely scalable. 
Um, so another question is, um, so, so Amit asks, um, what if someone with bigoted opinions wants to vote people like Trump, but at the same time, they don't want to publicly say that they voted for him and to bypass this, they sent their vote credit or voice credits to Kellyanne Conway, who would pass his vote on to Trump, simply making their voice credits anonymous. So the, the, um, the second part of the question, uh, so I, I, the, in general, the answer to this question is that, um, well, okay, we need to take this in two parts. So the second part of the question, in other words, if you, if you send your vote to a proxy, because, you know, with the intention of that, that proxy will send it on to, to the, uh, to the person that you want it to go to, um, that it, it's possible to set up radical exchange voice in such a way that that isn't possible. And so it, like in, in, in the, in the beta that we just did, you could send your, you could delegate your voice credits once you could send them on once, but the, but the voice credits that you would receive from other people, you couldn't delegate them a second time in this first delegation stage. So you could, you can simply set a product, you know, process the process that way. So that, you know, there, you know, you can only kind of, the voice credit can only hop once. Um, the, um, you know, and then you, uh, it's a more complicated question if you wanted to make voice credits persistent across different, different voting phases. Um, and then the question about, um, you know, if you wanted to uh, delegate voice credits to someone on savory, um, be, in order, because you didn't want to do it publicly or something, I, I think, I'm not sure I fully understand the question because, you know, votes can be private anyway. I mean, first of all, that seems like something um, that is, would arise in any liquid democracy system. And second, you know, even in, in any kind of private voting system, you know, you can, you can vote for something without people knowing that you, that you voted for it. So um, it's not that I, it's not that I don't see an issue there, but I'm not sure how I see the issue is, uh, you know, unique to the kind of system that we're trying to build. Um, do you have anything to add to that, Alex or Jen? Oh, I, I, I think you covered it. And, and uh, I just since you mentioned the fact that you can put checks in place to make sure that a voice credit doesn't get passed along multiple times in the delegation stage, we actually had that check in our first pilot. Um, any voice credit, and I just thought I'd mention that because I think it's sort of an important component for a couple different reasons. If any voice credit that you received in a transfer from someone else in the delegation stage was set aside and you only like really, it was really only added to your budget after the delegation stage had closed for that, for the reasons um, that you, you can't trigger multiple matches and have uh, collusion and stuff like that. Are there, I have a couple of points. Um, just thinking about what you guys, what you're talking about. Are there more questions though? We don't want to skip them. No, go ahead, Jen. So in the round that we did, you said that those that were, that the delegates invited outside of the initial invitee list were their, whatever they were given was matched, right? And I know we talked about certain caps for if 10 people invite the same person and then they're just have loads more credits than everybody else. We talked about things like caps on that that could get redistributed into like the, the UBI bucket <laughs> that wouldn't then go to the person that is already capped. Um, <clears throat> but another thing is why not, because it, it does, if it disincentivizes people that are in the first initial group to get 
to give their credits and then that person's just going to get double credits but then they can't pass them on so they're not able even if they were incentivized to invite somebody else that they think should be in the group wouldn't it be more fair i guess to to split the match among the invite inviter and invite to the person that was invited It's an interesting thought. Um, that might that might also be one of those things that where where the answer is different for different use cases. Like, yeah, yeah but it, that's that's an, an interesting thought for if if you are trying to if you're a community that's trying to grow, then you want to incentivize um, people inviting new people into the process, and and that might be a case where that would that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. I think that, so the, I've had, I've had a bunch of interesting conversations with people about the, this question of, of the sort of worry about not having the same number of voice credits, worry about, about different participants, not having the same number of voice credits. And I, there are, um, I, I should preface this by saying that like, I'm a, uh, I'm like a, a very committed egalitarian by disposition. <laughs> it's not like, like I, just, I, I, I do just want to say that, but before I start to say that, I think there are situations where, where, um, where it doesn't make sense. I think it's quite clear. There, there are really clear distinctions between situations where it does make sense and situations where it doesn't make sense. So um, uh, you can think about different kinds of organizations, different kinds of sort of political communities, and you can also think about different kinds of decisions. So for example, on one end of the spectrum, you might consider like, like technical decisions, decisions that are that purely just draw on like expertise or where the sort of the, the, the nature of the problem is very well defined and very well agreed upon, but different people have different levels of knowledge about how to, um, about how to like, you know, make the right call within those parameters. And then you can, on the other end of the spectrum, you can imagine decisions where, um, where it is, you know, where it more closely resembles like um, a political decision, basically, where you have different people whose interests are all equally important and who are all in an equally good position to express those, those interests and, um, and have them considered by the, by the community. Right, so on, the, on that second end of the spectrum, you want egalitarianism. On the first end of the spectrum, um, it makes sense to, to, to deviate from it, right? So it, for example, if, if we were, um, if the, uh, um, if the, if the, if the answer, if the question we were trying to answer is like, what's the next move should we make in a chess game? And we were making a collective decision about that. And, uh, and uh, Magnus Carlson was, uh, was in our community. I would delegate all of my voice credits to him because but I if know- there was a child prodigy, that's even better than him. That nobody- what, What's that? What if there's a child prodigy in the community that is, a, is even better than Magnus? Well, then I would, you know, you would delegate know. it to him if I knew that he was better than Mac. You see what I'm saying? But I'm but, saying that you, in a way, you can you still concentrate, it, like, what if somebody else does have a good idea that's not just a very prominent expert, but they are... No, I agree. Then it, like, if, if that's the case, then then the there should be caps on concentration mm -hmm. you know um so the the question is so you know you have to ask yourself the question of what what kind of uh what kind of decision is 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 being made right you know in in the um um uh i think that different kinds of different kinds of communities making different kinds of of decisions um, could could very reasonably put 
simply just put different kinds of caps on the uh, on on the on the matching fund, mm -hmm. you know, in 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 the quadratic funding match to uh, to to delegation. But you know, basically, there is this sort of there's this trade off between like. Um, uh, um, I'm not sure exactly. What, I mean, you you could call it expertise, but it's not it's not exactly the same word. I mean, it could also just be sort of um, like one of the you know one of the rationales in, in liquid democracy in general is is for example, if you just don't want to pay attention to the decision, you just rather uh, you know have someone someone else do it for you, then you know delegating your your voice credits to someone who you'd rather have represent you. Just enables you to like focus on focus on other things so there are you know other rationales that go a little bit beyond mm -hmm. even just like you know uh, yeah, expertise or something mm -hmm. um but uh you know but then on, on on the other hand when if we're all in sort of a, a position of of being epistemic equals um and our our interests are all equally implicated by the decision, then um, then we should absolutely all participate with exactly the same number of voice credits, you know, um, and you know that's what you know that that that's that intuition is the is the intuition behind um, behind one person one vote and you know, traditional egalitarian voting, and there's you know there there are good reasons for that. So it's not I don't know. Does that you know, to me, just keeping in mind that sort of spectrum of different kinds of decisions uh, um, helps to helps to clarify the the question of you know whether um, whether delegation is appropriate, whether quadratic funding matching pools of delegated credits are are appropriate. Does that? Would it, that make that makes sense. I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about what what's next in terms of um, then constructing the modulate the combination of the modules. Like what modulal modulality? Sorry, I can't say the word. What uh, formation? Who gets to choose that? And how is that even decided on? Yeah. How you how you implement it? Like to synthesize the what the conversation you two just had, what what Matt's saying, I think is there's like what as far as I can think of off the top of my head, like two uh, two characteristics of a decision that make it that make like a, a like a liquid democracy approach make more sense than an egalitarian approach, and it's like situations where there's either uh, where there's either unequal information due to expertise or different perspectives or such and such. So unequal information and then the other one being um, unequal stake. I think either one of those can, in, in either one of those situations, um, liquid democracy sometimes makes more stake or makes more sense than egalitarianism. Mm -hmm. So then once you decide to go and use a liquid democracy type system. The Jen's point is that you have this question of once you've decided you're 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 delegating and you're going to have an unequal distribution. If you choose this this method, the method that we used, where the voters get to give their voice credits to whoever they want, and maybe we're making a decision on chess and uh magnus is in the is in the delegation and everybody's giving their voice credits to magnus is his is is his level of influence relative to everyone else truly representative of his ability to make the decision or is it representative of his pop of his uh his his visibility or yeah right and so that's like a that's a once you've decided to do liquid democracy, that's a new problem that you have to address, and that's the point Jen's making, and that's also something that we're thinking about about our process. Are the you know are the 
are the people who are just the most known are known by the most people in the community are they going to get outsized influence when there are other people who really should have more influence from just like a social outcome optimality standpoint um but don't because they just haven't made as many connections yet in the community or something like that yeah, and where you want to maybe build in for collective intelligence rather than one person knows how to do it. And build it. But the other part, I know we're at the hour and a half, so I don't know, Matt, were there other questions or should we wrap, wrap up? Um, no, well, let's, let's, uh, let's wrap up. The, okay. um, I think we've, we've covered, covered most of it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Matt and Alex and Leon and Tim for the production. Thanks everybody for tuning in. So we have voice at radicalexchange.org if you want to email. You can also email us directly um, each to our Alex, Jennifer, or Matt at radicalexchange.org. And if you want to volunteer on anything um, in lots of different ways, we're also planning the next Radical Exchange conference. Volunteer at radicalexchange.org. And if you'd like to join a chapter or start a chapter, contact Fanny at radicalexchange.org or chapters at radicalexchange.org. And uh, what else, Alex, anything you want to? Yeah, so if, if you'd like to contribute as a, on the software side as a developer, you can find uh, all of these projects on GitHub um, and you can connect with us there. Um, Go on the Discord if you want to just join the conversation about the 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 mechanisms here, because there's you know as you can see there's a lot of super interesting conversations we're having all the time about this and anybody you know the more the merrier. So on um, join the conversation on Discord, um, and also like you know for, there's these couple, we we've identified a couple really interesting areas of of you know more formal research going forward so if you'd like to contribute to like a working group um in the areas of you know how to how to implement this on chain um civil resistance stuff like that you know reach out to us uh regarding regarding those areas as well because yeah we're there's a, there's a lot to discuss here and uh we're super excited to keep working on these some of these problems I just want to put out one more bit of information. Alex has just built another page. It's kind of a job board or a collaboration board to the Radical Exchange website. So if you go to the community section of the site, uh, probably next week you'll see a new section where you could post projects and find out about other projects that people are looking for. And that might be a place, um, Alex, where we could also put a plug how do people how people can get in touch as well if they want to work on this so radicalexchange.org at art rad exchange on twitter the discord there's a specific one for voice yeah I, ho hopefully somebody's somebody will be putting these in the chat and tweeting them and all that so <laughs> yeah the discord's in the slido okay great all right thank you everybody Thank Thanks. You. Thanks, Alex.